Hello and welcome to Famous Gays and Lesbians, Alleged and Otherwise. I'm your host, Thomas Connolly. I happen to be a gay actor and I live in the gayest city of them all, West Hollywood, California. Now, today's episode is about two of America's greatest gay playwrights that were boyfriends for five years. Okay, now there have been many well-known successful gay playwrights over the years, such as Truman Capote, with such works as Breakfast at Tiffany's, oh, and Tennessee Williams, writer of Streetcar Named Desire, just to name one of his classics, Edward Albee, who penned the Pulitzer Prize winning Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Terrence McNally, author of the brilliant Kiss of the Spider Woman, to name just one, Oscar Wilde, who penned the hilarious play An Ideal Husband, James Baldwin, author of the acclaimed play Blues for Mr. Charlie, Sir Noel Coward, who wrote such witty classics as Private Lives, which is still being performed on Broadway, and author Tony Kushner and his groundbreaking work Angels in America. So many great out acknowledged gay playwrights, but which two of those were boyfriends? Well, the answer is ta -da -da -da, Edward Albee and Terrence McNally. Well, Edward Albee was actually 10 years older than Terrence McNally. And while Terrence McNally was attending Yale University, Edward Albee invited Terrence up to his apartment for a nightcap. <laughs> We've all heard that line before. Well, Edward Albee became Terrence McNally's first boyfriend, and Terrence actually moved in to Edward Albee's apartment. At the same time, he was writing Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? This sounds so historic. This is now, this is really romantic. Edward Albee actually said that when he first laid eyes on Terrence's face, that Terrence McNally had the most beautiful face he had ever seen. Now, reportedly, Edward Albee and Terrence McNally had a rather volatile up and down, on and off relationship for about five years. Now, interestingly enough, this was a time when Edward Albee was starting to gain a lot of traction as one of America's great playwrights with such plays as The Zoo Story and The Death of Bessie Smith. But it was the play, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, that cemented Edward Albee's reputation as one of America's great playwrights. Edward Albee wound up winning three Pulitzer Prizes. The first was for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Now, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf ran for 664 performances on Broadway and then was turned into an Oscar-winning film with the legendary Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Now, one interesting theory about the play is that it's really about a gay couple that argue and bicker incessantly because they can't have a child of their own. Who knows? Now, my favorite Edward Albee play is The Goat, or Who is Sylvia? Who doesn't like a play about bestiality? This is a hilarious, fascinating portrait of a dysfunctional family with a father having an extramarital affair with a goat you don't hear that every day. And yes, a gay son and a mother who is more unhinged than Elizabeth Taylor as Martha. Now, I won't tell you the ending, but it has a surprising, violent, explosive one. Now, if you don't wind up seeing the play, at least read it. The Goat or Who is Sylvia? Now, interestingly enough, Terrence McNally said that while Edward Albee was generous, helpful, nurturing to other struggling, fledgling writers, not so much with him. Now, Terrence McNally experienced some early failures in the theater world, but went on to become what many critics called the Shakespeare of American theater. Now, that's pretty lofty praise. Terrence McNally is the recipient of five Tony Awards for such plays as Love, Valor, and Compassion, a play about coping with the AIDS crisis, Masterclass, a play about that diva Maria Callas, and Ragtime, a turn-of-the-century musical. 
gay. Terence McNally had gay characters in most of his plays. And the wonderful thing was that there was always an underlying acceptance of their LGBT status. Yeah, unlike other movies and plays at the time that featured gay and lesbian characters as homicidal killers. Uh, does Cruisin' or Basic Instinct ring a bell? But my favorite play of Terrence McNally, oh, because I know you're dying to hear my favorite, is Corpus Christi. Now, this was actually shut down once because of its depiction of a gay Jesus. Many conservative groups were outraged at the idea that Jesus would be gay. But who knows? Maybe Jesus was gay. I mean, come on. Look at those six-pack abs on the cross. Well, that's about it for this episode. This is Thomas Connolly for Famous Gays and Lesbians, Alleged and Otherwise. Hey, if you like this program, could you please like and subscribe? That would really help to sustain our show. Until next time, bye-bye.